Welcome friends to evening prayer for Monday the 23rd of May 2022. Evening prayer is being led from the parish church of St Mary on the holy island of Lindisfarne and we're grateful to the Reverend Canon Sarah Hills, the rector here, for being willing to keep the church open uh, this evening in order that I might record our time of worship together. It's raining outside and it's very, very windy and I think you wouldn't hear me very well if I continue to record outside. So Sarah, thank you so much. Sarah is the Rural Dean for this uh, benefice in which the Reverend Charlotte Osborne is also a vicar. So we do feel at home among friends. Let us pray. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Lord God, in the quietness of this place and worship, as we pause to worship you and pray to you, we hear the sounds of nature around us in this ancient place of prayer, where people have met to worship you down the centuries, dedicated to St. Mary and St. Aidan. Lord God, may we be good examples of the witness of the saints in our day. So hear our prayers and praises that we offer you this evening. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, you that by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth give you blessing out of Zion. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, our God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. The reading this evening is from the letter of St. James and chapter 1, verses 22 to 25. St. James says to the Christians of old, and therefore to you and I, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is not like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. I'm grateful to focus on the first verse of that passage of Scripture today. As I've completed the St Oswald's Way and arrived here on the holy island of Lindisfarne, earlier this evening, just in time to share an evening prayer here at the church. It's a moment of reflection and joy to know that the journey is done, but also to know the people I've met on the way are in my heart and mind. St James says, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves, do what it says. That makes me mindful of King Oswald, who became St. Oswald. King Oswald it was who invited a monk from Iona to come to Northumberland in order to help convert the people to the Christian faith which he himself had found. The first monk didn't work out and went back to Iona but sent someone else by the name of Adam. Well, Aidan couldn't speak Northumbrian. It might be said that you wouldn't understand the Geordie accent these days. But Aidan preached the word faithfully with Oswald by his side 
as the interpreter of the word. And so many came to faith in Jesus Christ as Saviour and Lord. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. As we listen to the word of God, I invite us to hear what God would say to us, the inspiration, the challenge, and to do that which he plants in our hearts because of it. Don't be mere listeners. I love this verse of scripture, like the one who looks at their face in the mirror, turns away and immediately forgets what they look like. <laughs> oh, let's just be those who hear the word, who are immersed in it, and who are willing to be challenged and inspired by it. So to today's journey. Today's journey started in Bambara, and as I walked away from the castle and towards um, the walk up the village, as it were, sorry for the pause there, um, it was a great moment uh, with the sun at my back. And so the, the journey started, and I followed the way. I was able to pause and pray at the church in Bambara, as I started, there was no one there. The service wasn't going to start for a couple of hours after I started walking. And then I started the journey. I met a number of people along the way, uh, all of them coming towards me. Two groups of young people doing the Bronze Duke of Edinburgh Award from Walpeth. So we just said hello. They told me what they were doing. I told them what I was doing uh, and we greeted one another. I continued on to Belford and went through the town. I'm so grateful to the chap who was filling a skip outside of his house as I walked along the road. Because he said to me, where are you going in canny lad? And I said, I'm doing the St Oswald's Way. I always said, is that part of the coastal route? And I said, yes it is. He said, well, I didn't want you to get lost, but they've knocked the sign down. Someone drove into it. So when you go up there, you need to turn right. Oh, how, how wonderful to have that direction uh, and, and that Geordie accent as well. Uh, very, very strong. Fortunately, I knew what he meant. I walked along the stretch of the way through a forest. Again, uh, diversions within the forest this time because of many fallen trees due to storm Arwen. I was brought to mind of our own Gareth Jones, who a couple of weeks ago did the rat race, and it felt very much like I was doing a rat race through the forest, scrambling over tree trunks and under fallen trees and around them uh, in order to get through on the path. I met a lovely couple on the way um, who were from uh, Bakewell in Derbyshire, enjoying a stroll today. Um, I was able to warn them about the fallen trees, so they were grateful for that. And they saw the shell that I was carrying in my map bag, uh, the pilgrim shell, and they knew exactly what that was. And they said to me, are you doing the St Cuthbert's Way? Of course, the St Cuthbert's Way joins the St Oswald's Way at that point. I said, no, no, I'm not. I'm doing the St Oswald's Way. Oh, they said, we thought you must be on pilgrimage because we saw the, the shell. I said, well, that's very knowledgeable of you. Uh, would you like to share with me how you know the story of the pilgrim shell? And as it turns out, they're both retired vicars working ecumenically with the Methodist circuit in Bakewell and interestingly, the superintendent minister there, Adrian Perry, who trained for ministry with Helen and I. It is indeed a small world in the middle of nowhere. Continued on my way and was slightly frustrated to be able to be very close to the causeway where I needed to walk across onto the island and there was a sign saying, please do not go through this field. Uh, and clearly it was obvious that sitting right by the stile uh, were cows with calves. There was no way I was going to um, disturb them. Uh, there was a diversion, but it was very long so I took that diversion in order not to disturb the cows and then found myself at the end of the causeway. I had hoped to take off my boots and walk the sands 
uh, but uh, there was a sign saying uh, that it was dangerous to do so on your own, so I was wise and sensible and walked along the roadway across the causeway and then ended up here just as evening prayer had begun, uh, led by Reverend Canon Sarah. And so the end of the journey has come. I've met many people along the way. I've written their names down in my journal as I've gone day by day, and I shall hold them in my heart and in my prayers going forward. It was also a privilege to light a prayer as requested by one of our congregation uh, for one of their friends here at the parish church uh, to pray for them in their need. So I invite us to be still before God, to reflect on the day that we've had. Maybe we've enjoyed the barn service, and maybe you've enjoyed the weather and the picnic and joyful, exuberant worship. Or maybe you've been elsewhere, doing things which helped you to come close to God in worship, in prayer, or through other means. Therefore, let us pray. Lord, we would pray this evening for your wonderful world. We give you thanks for it. And Lord, as the journey I have taken has taken me through some devastation and difficulty, we pray for people who are affected by storms still today. Physical storms around them and storms within their hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for the people who we meet on the journey of life, those who we walk alongside and those who we encounter on the way. I thank you, Lord, for those who have blessed my journey today by a nod of greeting, by a cheery smile, for those who have pointed the way where it was not obvious, and for those who have shared something of their story. Lord, would you bless each one? Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill, concerned, worried, struggling with mental health, struggling to see a way forward. In the quietness, we offer our prayers to God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we would offer the prayers of our hearts to you, whatever they may be. And we would pray for ourselves that we may be good witnesses and faithful servants of Christ in all that we are and say and do. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Light in our darkness, Lord, we pray, and in your great mercy, deliver us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, with those for whom we have prayed, with the people of Ukraine, with those who are struggling, and with all God's people, this evening time and forevermore. Amen. Friends, don't just be hearers of the word, but doers of it. And so as we conclude our worship this evening online, we hear the hymn which encourages us to be doers of the words. We have a gospel to proclaim. Friends, thank you for sharing my journey over this past week. Thank you to Phil for so faithfully editing together the evening prayers. And thank you to God for being my companion on the way and to those who silently at home have prayed for me, supported me, sent encouraging messages along the way. Friends, take care and enjoy singing out this wonderful hymn of praise.
god bless